Welcome to CFC Fan TV. We're about to talk you through our five points of where it all went wrong on the weekend. But before I do that, I just have to remind you of a fantastic competition that is available on our Instagram page. Head over there now, and thanks to Carabao, you could be flying to Budapest on the Chelsea team plane, staying in a hotel, going to the game, and flying back with the team. It's an incredible prize. Head over to our Instagram page now to enter. Point one. Oh, sadly, there's only one place to start here, and that is... David Luiz, so. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, sitting almost front row, I think I was fifth row or something like that before I moved to, to go near the back so that I couldn't see any more of it. Uh, yeah, he, was, he had a terrible, terrible game. I think he was at fault for, what, all three goals? Although yeah. second, I think, was combined with Jorginho. Uh, third was combined with Jorginho, but it was, it was a poor performance from him. I don't know what I think every fan in there could tell it weren't his day. Uh, what's that stat you have on, on him? Well, actually, it's not my stat. It's a great, it was a great thing on Twitter. I think it's, it's jugged. You know, lots of match-going Chelsea fans here, and also people who don't go to the games but just are active on Twitter, will know the twins, Jug and Tug, they're from North London. Uh, I think it was Carefree Jug did quite a funny tweet where he analysed every goal that we've conceded this season. And he worked out that I think of the 11 goals that we've conceded this season, David Luiz is directly responsible for seven. <laughs> Now, I've been a huge admirer of David, David Luiz. I met him yesterday. In fact, I still am a huge admirer of him, but it's not been good enough. And I remember a, a couple of months ago, Sophie, we did an Ask... Uh, sorry, a, a Sophie versus Rory stood in this exact seat, mm -hmm. and I made a strong case for David Luiz starting every game, and you were suggesting Christensen. And at the time, I think the majority of people thought I was correct. Yeah, true. I, I think I was correct at the time, but now... I think Christensen definitely deserves a chance. And but the, all the problem, points you but, made were, were spot on. Yeah, but the problem is now is that Christensen's been out for so long, you can't expect him to just come in and straight away fit really well into a side. We're playing a completely different style of football. We're playing a, a different lineup, And I think it would take him a while to settle in. So I think Sari has to make a very quick decision now. I mean, ASAP, if anything. You know, we've got the game in midweek. We're playing Pauk. Uh, we're, we're through. You know, we are definitely through. Yeah, we're we're just, almost top. But I think for Premier League purposes... Sorry, needs to make a strong decision on who he's going to put in there. And I actually think he'd probably stick with David Luiz. So I think when you're... I don't think you can. Not after that performance. Nah, you can't go neither, away but... to Tottenham. You can't go away to Tottenham, gift them three goals, get out the way of a Harry Kane shot, lose, lose a battle with Hunmin Song. I was shocked we were that far. I thought I was shocked we were 2-0 two -nil, two -nil down it by half time. I couldn't believe kick. it. It was a ridiculous free kick to give away for the first goal. Yeah. I just don't think... I think that Andreas Christensen now deserves a chance. I, I'm not, I agree with you, So There's going to be some bedding in problems, but we cannot simply keep selecting the same back line, keep conceding goals and then wondering why we're conceding but goals. But I said this... No, you were correct. I, I'm, not too, I'm not too proud to admit that. You were correct. I think that you either, either saw it first or were slightly premature in your appraisal. But I love but David I love David Luiz. I love people I love people well. won't understand this, but I, I do love David Luiz. I've just never liked him as a defender. There was a time when we did play him more central midfield years ago. Yeah. The only problem is now is that he's, I don't think he's going to get in ahead of the midfield, of, you know, ahead of any, any of our other, other players. So, um, therefore, where do you put him? And obviously, Sarri's chose to keep him in the team. So, I mean, only time will tell what he does at the weekend and so yeah. on but I mean I just don't think that we can keep good. selecting it wasn't good it was a, it was a terrible performance in the at the worst possible stadium against the worst possible team it was it was a it's, perfect it's storm. the biggest it's the I mean we'll come on to this point later it's the biggest derby of the season for it's the biggest away day of the season for me anyway it no is, matter what absolutely. it is and absolutely. I always look so forward to it and to, to to lose like that and to make mistakes like that in a game I'm afraid David Louise uh you were definitely at fault there Point two, then, is Jorginho. Now, I've been an avid fan of Jorginho ever since he came. I'm glad that we had, we finally found somebody next to Kante that seemed to be doing, doing well. Uh, but he was, again, at fault um, against Tottenham. It wasn't a good performance from him. He looked all over the place. He kept, he kept having the ball nicked off of him. Um, and it just didn't look like it was uh, flowing, I think, is, <laughs> is no. to say the least. It just it, it weren't a good performance from him. It wasn't a good team performance from him. And overall, I mean, it's quite hard to say anyone, really, because it was really that. It was, I feel very deflated. Yeah, but. completely deflated. And you're right, he, he really didn't have a good game, Jorginho. And what happened on the touchline with Son was pathetic. Mm. I think he needs, he needs to rectify that. But the problem is what's happening with our midfield is we're trying to accommodate Jorginho. And I do understand why, because at what he does, he is the master. Yeah. You know, he's a dazzling football player and I completely agree that we're very lucky to have him. But finding a way of making him play is, is actually quite detrimental to us because we're, we're forcing a system to accommodate him. And I don't quite know what the answer is because 
N'Golo Kante definitely makes that challenge if he was in that position. If N'Golo Kante was our defensive midfielder, he would be making that challenge and that goal would not have happened. What we, but equally, you can't have N'Golo Kante picking the ball up where Jorginho does because you know, he's not quite as assured on the ball. So I'm not, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. What I thought was very interesting, though, yesterday, thanks to Carabao, we went to Cobham. We went down to the training ground and watched an open training session. It was fascinating. I loved every minute of it, and the players treated us brilliantly. It really was a wonderful day, and thank you to Carabao for that. But watching one of the training sessions was enlightening because there was a, there was a match going on. There was a four-on-four, four, and you had four in one colour, four in another colour, as you'd expect, and then you had a floater. You had In a purple bib, you had Jorginho. And what he would do is he would play as the fifth player for whatever team had the ball. So he was never on the defensive team. Yeah. He, was, he was always helping build attacks, helping people get out of trouble, finding space where it perhaps didn't naturally occur. But he was never defending. Mm. And I think we saw with his attempt to rob Hunmin Song of the ball that it doesn't come naturally to him. So I just don't know what we're going to do with that midfield three because individually... They're three of the best football players yeah. in the league. And nobody's better of, uh, than N'Golo Kante at what he does. No. Equally, I think Kovacic is, is fabulous. I don't think he had a good game, but I do really like what I've seen of him so far. And, you know, I'm pretty sure Ian Wright said he's one of the best in the world. So I just don't Kante. know what we're going to do with I, I just don't know what we're going to do with that midfield. Well, do you know what I think? I think Sari's system and how he's worked out up until this point for the first start of the season has worked very well and you're playing a more attacking style of football. So, therefore, I think it's actually worked quite well. But I think going into the second half of the season, like I said, other teams start to pick up form. They start to get a bit better. I think if you can't master your defensive... I don't know, areas. Responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. That's the mm -hmm. word I'm looking for, responsibilities. Uh, then you're going to have a lot of problems. And I think we're starting to see that now. I think, I don't think our game against Everton was particularly brilliant. And I think the, the Spurs game highlighted probably the, how bad it can get if we, don't, if we don't fix those problems. You're completely right. So if as soon as somebody man-marks Jorginho, we we've, we've, haven't had an answer. You know, it happened against Everton, finishing all new. It happened against Tottenham, we got battered. So between Sarri and Jorginho, we need an answer to that question. OK, I'm going to let Rory take the reins on this one. Oh, and that cruel. is, <laughs> I know, I, I know. I've got, okay, you guys I know I love William, but um, again, another <laughs> player that we feel, uh, let's not get it wrong here. You know, the whole team performance as, as a, collectively was, was, was terrible. Um, but William didn't have a particularly good game, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't. And again, on this channel, you know, we've, we've often been avid and zealous defenders of William. We, we both think he's great on his, on his day. We both have, have supported him on his bad days. And generally speaking, we both love him. Yeah. But that was bad. It was really, really bad performance. Um, he didn't contribute anything going back. Just a nervous laugh, by the way. He contributed nothing going forward. Um, he made some terrible decisions. He was incredibly profligate on the ball. And it was a bad day at the office. It was, really was. And I think that Pedro now has to start when fit. Yeah. Oh my God, 100%. I love Pedro. I think when, if you don't remember when he got injured a, a, a while back, I think with the West Ham game, we didn't have him to bring on. You can just tell that it's a bit of, a, bit of an issue when he's, when he's not around. Um, it was actually quite hard for me the weekend because I was sat very near the front. Sometimes it's better to be a little bit further back so you can actually see what's going on when it's that bad. When it's that bad, where so, you want to be is like behind your sofa. Right? Well, yeah, behind your sofa or just not yeah. watching it all. But um, no, I didn't, until you watch back the replays, you don't see the specific errors that William did make in that game. And unfortunately, um, yeah. it, was not, it, weren't his day. it wasn't anyone's day. So it's quite... Look, I, I think it's very difficult. I, th I think as much as, as much as I think William had a disastrous game, and I'm not afraid to say that, you know, I do still like him, I do still rate him, and I do still want him to have a huge impact on our season. It's not easy for him. I'm not making an excuse for him here, but it's not easy for him to play the position that he plays with the midfield playing as they played, with Morata leading the line. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy position for William to occupy equally though he needs to to offer more than he did because I mean he offered diddly squat zero okay I'm going to talk about this one and it's somebody we've talked as a player that we've talked about numerous times again on this channel and although I feel like we try to be very uh, understanding, uh, compassionate, um, emphasize, yeah, emphasize with, with time. Yeah, yeah, you know, but just, just all in all, try and understand the player. Confidence is a huge thing. Now, I said in this derby, please don't start Morata. I said, I said, I think we should start Giroud purely because I think Giroud. I mean, you made a good point. He knows what it's like to play in a big, in a big derby. He used to play for Arsenal. He knows how important these games are. Uh, Giroud, I think, would understand. 
how much it means to the fans. I also think he would have a lot more energy, a lot more fire. He would be a lot more forceful. He'd be um, on side occasionally. He'd be on side, yeah. And we didn't start with Giroud. And, I mean, he come on and scored a goal. So, I mean, that sort of answered it all. But starting right in this game, for me, no matter how well, bad or good he's played in, in previous games, it wouldn't have mattered to me if he'd scored 10 goals before or, or zero goals. In this game, I don't think Morata is the sort of player that can come on and make a difference. It is a huge game. You've got to be... You've got to be extre- You've got you've got to have a lot of fire in you. You've got. You, I mean, it is. It, it's, it's a passionate, aggressive, hostile derby. Yeah. None of those words are suitable for. You've got to have right. some fight in you for this game. And although, don't get me wrong, I don't think it was displayed by by the rest of them. I think having Morata up front, even when we did look like we were just tiny, you know, just about to score, nothing happened, and I could tell that wasn't going to happen from from the get go. Um, and I think us conceding two goals very on early on in the first half mm. uh, sort of showed that unless you I mean fans around me were saying oh don't you miss Diego Costa don't you miss Diego Costa and you don't want to dwell on it but it, it's I don't think it's Diego himself it's what it's, it's the sort of striker that Diego is and that we don't have that in Morata so Absolutely. well do you know what else I mean Diego Costa is now a distant memory and I don't think it's going too well for him in Spain anyway but do you know do you know what we managed to see it was the, the performance from an archetypal incredible centre forward in Harry Kane we were, I thought Harry Kane was magnificent. I thought he played brilliantly. I thought he led the line incredibly well. I think he fought for his team. He was a great captain. He was an example. He was a model professional. This is torture for me to say, by the way, but it's all true. He scored a good goal. Um, and on the, uh, you know, on the flip side, we had Alvaro Morata, and he was, he was the opposite to everything I've just said about Harry Kane. Yeah, completely agree. Point five, and probably the most crucial point that I want to make, is the lack of fight in the team. Now, the... Tottenham Derby, the away day, is for me one of the most important away days of the season, if not my favourite and the most important. It's something I look forward to every single year. And for me, losing against them just, just isn't an option. I don't think these, this group of players understand how important it was. I didn't see... I saw it from the, I saw it from the Spurs side. I saw how much they wanted to yeah. win. Uh, I didn't see it from us at all. I thought we came out from the get-go. Didn't look, didn't look fiery at all. Didn't look like yeah. we were up for it. Didn't look like we understood the importance of the derby. And for a lot of fans around us, you know, this is one of those games where... When you're when you're in the away end and you're losing, fans just it's more like a more like a what's it's a the dagger to the heart. Yes, it's, it's not it's like awful. it's not like oh we're not doing very well. It's I can't believe we're losing against yeah, this lot. It's 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 really painful, and I think that you can actually kind of draw a line in the sand. I think since you know what they they dubbed it the Battle of Stamford Bridge. You know when we, the game that finished yeah. two all when we stopped them winning the league. <laughs> that's the relationship that we should have with Tottenham. That's what we do to Tottenham. You know, we they qualify for Europe, we win the European Cup and kick them out of it. Yeah. They beat us in the Cup 5-1, we beat them 4-0 twice in three days. That is the relationship that we have with Tottenham. Yeah. That's how it should be, and that's how it's been over the years. You know, they didn't beat us at Stamford Bridge for 28 years. So when people throw that Roman Abramovich thing, oh, the money came in and it all changed... Mark Steen scored a winner against you in the last minute and we won 4-3. You know, I've seen Dennis Wise score great goals against you. It's, it's not a Roman Abramovich thing. No. And that, since, since that day when we stopped them winning the league, they seem to have had more fight. You know, I know we've had good results against them. I know we beat them at Wembley, that 4-2 totally. game. But they've had more fight. They've been up for it. And I think that's because players like Deli Ali, players like Danny Rose, players like Harry Kane, players like Eric Lamella have said, we will not tolerate this team anymore. After that incident... They, you know, they were crying in the dressing room at Stanford Bridge and we mocked them for it. The relationship changed. They are now so up for this game and I think that their, their players, their core, hardcore, uh, aggressive players fight for this result. Yeah. We don't really have that core. In a way, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I say, though, when we've lost the likes of JT and Frank and all the players that would understand if really what it is. would not tolerate that result. No. Well, when they understand what it is to, to you know, play in this derby and to win and what it means to win it, it's, it's a huge deal. I don't think we actually have anybody at the moment who I could say, yeah, you know what, that, that player understands, that player gets I it. I agree. And, and of the five points that we've made here, I mean, let us know your thoughts. But for me, this is the jewel in the crown. This is the biggest problem out of everything that we've mentioned here. The fact that the players don't seem to be aware or at least display the fight that is needed. Really bad.